Men love women who know this. And we're going to get into this for a second. I want to talk about how to meet a quality guy and how we'll get him to adore you. So let's assume quality means being in one's power and mutual respect for one another. Let's just take that as what quality means, whether it's a man or a woman or a relationship. That's what quality means. Well, what emotionally healthy men want from women is women that don't give their power to the man, meaning that their happiness is solely predicated on whether or not he's giving her attention, he's validating her, he's supplying entertainment. Emotionally healthy men don't want to be responsible for that. And yet, sadly, I've witnessed so many women give their power away to men. And I want to address this as we lean into how to meet a quality man that will actually adore you. So what does it mean to give your power away? Well, I, I'm going to give you some examples to help you with this. So number one, that the and by the way, I'm going to read my notes, so please forgive me. The relationship is on his terms. You abandon your standards and you abandon your boundaries. See, when we don't give our power away, we don't make the other person responsible for the relationship tra trajectory. When two emotionally healthy people come together, when two, we'll call them quality people come together, and we said quality is retaining one's power and having mutual respect for one another, these couples co-create a relationship. It is not predicated on the man's direction. And yet, sadly, I've witnessed so many women who give their power to a man. In other words, it's all predicated on whether or not he loves her and he's directing the relationship. Now, I understand this is confusing because we basically have a narrative that, and I didn't quote this, but women are the gatekeepers of sex and men are the gatekeepers of commitment. And what that means is men are the ones who initiate the commitment conversation. More importantly, men initiate the marriage conversation. So we've been literally, habitually, you know, um, you know, it's come down from you know thousands of years that men are the directors of the relationship. And yet, is that really the way it should be? Is it? I think two people when they come together, it's a so that they come together as sovereign beings, and as I said earlier, co-creating a relationship together. Okay, number two, women oftentimes give their power away by being silent, and what I mean to say, they don't speak their truth in relationship. They're fearful for sharing their feelings. They're fearful fearful for asking questions of the man. And the fear is that he's going to end the relationship. So I've witnessed so many women who are actually silent and fearful in this process. And that is certainly giving one's power away. You know, the truth is, is if two people decide to explore a physically intimate relationship, I believe you have every right to ask whatever you want, you know, and, and certainly not to badger someone and to confront someone and to interrogate someone. But at the same time, you have every right to have questions answered so you can feel safe in the relationship. And that's something I truly encourage. In fact, when I wrote my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Help, and Spiritual Work, chapter one is speak your truth. Just do it in a kind way. And when you're fearful of speaking your truth, you are giving him your power. And that is not attractive and a high-quality man an emotionally healthy man will not adore you. And it's going to make it challenging to meet that person. Number three, I see this happens for those of you who've had relationships that ended, is you make it all about the other person. In other words, how they might have um, um, used you, how they might have mistreated you. And, and to the extent that I'm not suggesting you don't share those feelings and frustrations, but at the same time, when you hyper-focus about him, instead of redirecting that attention towards yourself, and what I mean by attention for yourself is loving on yourself and let that, that person is gone. So, you know, they shouldn't be taking up real estate in your head. And if they're taking up real estate in your head, then you've given them your power 
And that is not very attractive to any new suitor if it remains in your consciousness. And the reality is, is these days, most everybody has had multiple relationships. And because of that, there's a lot of real estate those people are taking up in many people's heads. And then when you enter into the dating process, you're not entering with beginner's mind. In some cases, many women are, are operating from a place of bitterness, um, jadedness, sadness, and that's also giving your power away to a man. Number four, waiting for him to always initiate contact or worse, waiting for him to initiate contact for some sort of validation. You know, I, I get this habitually, you know, why didn't he call me? Why doesn't he send me a good morning text? Why doesn't he send me a good evening text? Well, it's a two-way street for everybody. You know, it's not, it's, it's not the man's job to constantly be in communication. Again, as I said earlier, this should be a two-lane street. It should be that you parked your cars in the garage and you're making mutual effort and you can take turns driving each other's car. <laughs> and yet, sadly, there is this expectation because the need for constant communication these days and it's it's because there isn't a level of trust built in the relationship. There isn't a level of safety that's been built in the relationship. So when we become dependent on just some sort of contact, instead of really having deeper conversations in the early get-go, then it's no wonder we have a problematic dating and relationship um, environment that we live in today. And so I encourage you that relationships are a two-lane street. In other words, you mutually make effort with one another. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know. Oh, for some of you, you stop doing your pre-relationship life. The things you did before you met this person, you stop because you're in this relationship. And that's not healthy for either person. I know I'm, I'm guilty of this. Even in my most sig recent significant relationship, I abandoned some of my previous practices, I'm going to take ownership of that. And I was caught up in la-la land. And we all get a, a pass on being in that space. But at the same time, when we do that, we show up as less of a partner in this dynamic. And that's not very attractive when we've done that to any future partner. Um, feeling like, by the way, giving your power away also to a previous relationship is you feeling like if he doesn't love you, there's you have no worth. If he doesn't love you, you have no worth. You certainly have worth. You have plenty of worth. You are enough. You know, sadly, we are suffering from I'm not good enough, I'm not lovable, and I'm not likable. So many humans are suffering in this area. And it's no wonder there's so much discord out there in the dating, mating, and relating realm. And when we give our power to another, meaning they have to love us for us to feel good about ourselves, then it's it's then it's the it's not the reminder. It should be the catalyst for redirecting yourself into loving yourself. And we're going to talk about what loving yourself looks like in a moment. And lastly, you know, when you think this is the only person you'll ever have the best sex in your life and you'll have the best chemistry, okay? You know, I've observed a number of people have had multiple relationships and after each one ended, they thought that the previous one was the best they ever had until they put themselves, they did some healing work, they did some emotional clearing and they put themselves back out there and they found someone that was even better than the previous one. So just remember, that if you're single right now and you had a relationship that was seemed to be perfect on it, you know, to some degree, just remember that is certainly possible for you in the future. That is certainly possible for you in the future. So when it comes to meeting a high quality guy, quality guy, remember we said quality is a person that stands in their power and they treat a relationship with mutual respect. I think it's important to Focus not on the effort of trying to find someone. Not and 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 let me just be clear when I say that. And I wrote something down. There's a subtle line between making effort and desperately making effort. 
Let me repeat that. There's a, there's a fine line between making effort and desperately making effort. And the, the line in between that, the line in between is non-attachment to the outcome. See, sadly, when we give attachment to the outcome, that's another way we give our power away. So if we want to meet people in this dating realm, I'm not here to suggest that we don't, we discontinue, for example, dating apps, okay? You know, dating apps happen to be the most popular way people are meeting here. At the same time, if you're going to make that effort, I highly encourage you to do it from a detached place. Like you would maybe a work, well, no, I was going to say a work assignment, but that's, we could be very attached to the work we do. So being from a detached place, in other words, you make effort, you might spend 20, 30 minutes a day looking at profiles, sending out emails or responding to emails, spending a little bit of time, excuse me, with no attachment to the outcome. Let's take it another step. How do we manifest someone? Are you familiar with the term manifestation? Yeah. Conjure someone up. <laughs> Remember Bewitch used to wiggle their, her nose and, some, and something would magically appear? How do we manifest someone? How do we manifest someone in our lives? Well, I think first and foremost is to be relationship ready. To be relationship ready. What does it mean to be relationship ready? Well, I think first, coming back to what I said earlier, is clearing your past, healing or healed from your past relationships. And certainly, if you are suffering from some childhood wounds and traumas and adult traumas, then it's imperative to, to heal from those spaces as well. Because sadly, how we were raised creates our personality. How we were raised creates who we are as individuals. And sometimes that creates negative patterns and limiting beliefs in our life. And because of that, oh, and also let's not even forget attachment style and the imago. I want to mention two books. Folks, you folks, you know me. I'm going to recommend these books. I'm going to recommend Attached by Amir Levine and Getting the Love You, or Amir Levine and Rachel Heller and Getting the Love You Want by Harvell Hendricks and Helen Hunt. Why I'm recommending these two books? When you understand your patterning of how we choose relationships, then we're better prepared to make better choices. In the, in the dating, mating, and relating process. Because first is being relationship ready. Second is vetting the person. And along with vetting is really understanding who is compatible with you. You know, I said, and, and by the way, I'm here to raise my hand. This is not easy work. This is not easy work determining who's compatible with you and vetting. Having, being discerning. Being discerning is not easy, especially when we feel like we're swimming in a limited pool of potential suitors, right? When you feel like there's so few to choose from that when you got a live body, you're like, well, let me, I've got this live body and we're attracted to one another. Let's make this work. And sadly, they lack, you, you don't share the same values with one another. Sadly, your lifestyles aren't blendable with one another. And sadly, the one or both of you are lacking the emotional maturity of the relationship skills to actually make a relationship flourish. So recognizing that relationship readiness, as I said in the early stages, is going to help better prepare you to meet a quality person in your life that will adore you. Number two, getting real clear Getting real clear on who's really compatible with you in the areas of values, lifestyle, and emotional maturity, and vetting for that, discernment, as I frequently say. And if you need some support with that, hey, reach out to me to schedule a discovery call to see if working with a coach is right for you. That's my area of expertise, is to help you become more discerning. Because the third phase is actually getting out there and making effort to be seen by single eligible people. Think about this for a moment, folks. How often are we physically in front of single eligible people in our given daily lives? Now, 
for someone like me that works from home, that's infrequent. That's where maybe a dating site actually has some benefit. Or also maybe you have activities in your life. Maybe you're in a meetup group. Maybe you're in some sports. Um, like pickleball or something like that seems to be the most popular thing going right now. Maybe you're into music. Maybe you're into yoga. Maybe you're into healing, meditation, um, retreats. Maybe you're into personal development. Start spending more time doing the things you love, being with like-minded people, because that increases your chances of being seen. Because that piece, the fact is, is attraction, attraction is such a challenging thing to really identify. And what I mean to say is we, we feel when there's first physical attraction with someone, certainly there's another thing called energetic attraction with another human being. And the challenging piece is we don't necessarily as a society spend enough time with people to feel that with another person. Now, for some people, they're in a work environment where they get that, that opportunity, or maybe they're part of a group and they get that opportunity. But this is really one of the challenging things. And also, and this is, and, and I say this because I'm guilty of this is what I'm about to share as well. You know, I think there needs to be, I, I would say flirting skills is probably something most people are poor at doing. And I think flirting is that that spiciness that 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 it's like it's like lighting a match, you know, for keeping the candle lit. You know, it's like when you can flirt, you can keep that candle lit. And I'd say most people have weak skills in this area. And, you know, sense of humor plays a part in this flirtiness. And sometimes people have differing sense of humor and they have different flirting skills and they butt heads with one another. I think flirting is, 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 is part of that romance piece. And I mean it in very uh, subtly because I don't believe romance should be a way of two people entering into a relationship. I think romance should be reserved for those who are already in a relationship. I think that is what keeps a relationship long lasting. In fact, you know, the fourth piece in this puzzle is do you know how to maintain and make a relationship thrive? Do you have the tools? Do you have the tools? And what I mean to say is good communications tools. For example, I highly recommend reading Nonviolent Communication by Marshall Rosenberg. I am still scratching the surface at getting better at being more articulate with my thoughts and my feelings. This is not easy work, folks. This, I mean, to be to 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 meet and 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 create a long-lasting relationship takes a lot of inner work. And we call this self-love because it's about self-esteem, self-confidence, self-reliance, self-determination. Oh, that's all wrapped up in the self-love. And, and most importantly, self-love is not beating yourself up for not being perfect, not beating yourself up for not feeling good enough, not feeling lovable, not feeling likable. And just like you'd want to give a hug to a little child, we all have a little child inside of us that needs love. And that's what self-love is all about, is nurturing the little kid inside of us. Because when we can reach a point of genuinely, and this is not easy, and I think this is a, a lifelong journey. When we begin to accept ourselves for who we are and come from a heart-centered place of just being sincere, being vulnerable, being authentic, being transparent, we become a better manifester for the type of relationship we want because we embody what we want to experience from someone else. And as I said earlier, when someone's retaining their power the best they can and they have mutual respect for one another, I think that's where adoration, that's where love truly resides. 
Food for thought anyway. Hey, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Please post a comment below if this resonated with you, have something to share. As always, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel. And if you're part of my group called Midlife Love Mastery, send folks to uh, my website, jonathanasley.com. Have them click the group coaching button so they can join our fantastic group. And I'm going to sign off this video as I always do. First off, give myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Barrog of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, Teddy bear a pillow and give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.